Thank you so much. And hello, Colombia. Yeah. Yeah. So, so happy to be back here at my alma mater as a representative of the ultra sexy, ultra trendy industry of vending machines. <laughs> That's right, vending machines. And I know what you're asking yourself. Are vending machines a part of the discussion of a better tomorrow? And I hear you. But what if I was to tell you that vending machines are more important than hospitals in solving America's greatest health problem? What if I was to tell you that the five million plus snack and beverage vending machines in the United States could serve as the tipping point to reverse the trend of educational decline in our country? Would you call me crazy? It wouldn't be the first time. I'd like to start off by playing a game because games are fun and they take the focus off the quality of the speaker, which is good for me. <laughs> All right, this is a game you've played before, and it's called What Doesn't Belong. You're simply gonna tell me what in the following list does not belong, okay, of recommended types of speakers to include at a successful TEDx event. All right, what doesn't belong, we good? First, renowned researcher of molecular product design. B, expert in the field of cancer genomics and drug targeting. C, internet pioneer and renowned software developer. And then there's D, Vending machine guy. <laughs> What's the answer? D. If you answered vending machine guy, you are correct. All right. I, uh, I, I, I do not belong, and it's pretty clear that I tricked people at Columbia Engineering TEDx onto getting onto stage today. Kind of like I tricked my wife, who's down here, into marrying me, her, me by telling her that I owned a multi-state retail healthy fast food chain that utilizes automated advanced dispensing technology rather than the fact <laughs> that I operated a vending route, all right? But in all seriousness, I think the, po the topic of not belonging is a very important one today. Because in order to create a better tomorrow, the creators must be prepared and willing to not belong, to forge a completely different path and to do exactly the opposite of what, you're been to what you've been told. In the New York-based satirical film, American Psycho, the character Patrick Bateman declares, I just want to fit in. But the creators of A Better Tomorrow must purposefully go against the grain. This is especially true for engineers, because above all else, to engineer is to create, to veer off path, to fly in the face of the old guard, and to be as those much more experienced than you would say, completely unreasonable. The reasonable man adapts himself to the world, where the unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Are you willing to be unreasonable? Next. <laughs> with a family filled with health professionals, it wasn't a surprise that I attended Columbia on the path to attend medical school and become a cardiothoracic surgeon. I chose to study biomedical engineering because it satisfied all of my pre-med requisites. And perhaps more importantly, I thought it would sound fancy when introducing myself to girls downtown at the Fashion Institute of Technology. <laughs> During my sophomore year, I became a personal trainer at the New York Sports Club on 80th and Broadway. And it was there for the first time that I saw how a little bit of nutritional education and regular exercise could completely change somebody's life. My clients went from fatigued, frustrated, and unhappy to energized, optimistic, and fulfilled. It was about at this same time that I realized heart, pati heart patients, at least most of them, those people who I'd be operating on as a surgeon, could have completely prevented their operation through enhanced and better lifestyle habits. So I began to ask myself, would I, do I want to focus my life on fixing a problem that's already occurred, next. <laughs> or preventing that problem from ever occurring in the first place. Next, oh, I got it, yes. <laughs> and then one day after working out, I saw a woman buy a 20 ounce soda from the vending machine at the club, the only food and drink dispensary that was available at that time. She opened up the soda, 
took a swig out of it, put in the cup holder of her treadmill, and started running. And that's when a light bulb went off in my head. And that's when I had my aha moment. If people on the upper, if residents of the Upper West Side of Manhattan who are affluent, well-educated, have good means, if they don't have access to the healthy foods and drinks that they need to be happy, healthy, and productive, what's a prognosis for the rest of the world? And that is when it dawned on me. A vending machine could be more important than a hospital in solving today's current obesity epidemic. And why is that? Because a vending machine stands for convenient food distribution, for easy access. And at the end of the day, obesity and malnutrition are access problems. Obesity, a disease of malnutrition, costs American estimated $190 billion per year, as high as 21% of total U.S. health care costs. U.S. employers are losing about $164 billion per year and loss of productivity due to obesity-related issues from employees. This is a big deal. This is no small problem. But when people talk about the solutions, they typically talk about three things. They say, well, we can solve obesity by educating people more about nutrition, getting people to eat less bad food and more good food, and having them exercise more. And don't get me wrong, I believe in those things. They're very important, but they're not the most important thing. Because how is the most nutritionally informed individual going to eat healthfully in this environment? when the majority of our country's streets are saturated with fast food restaurants and junk food stocked convenience stores? And how are kids going to eat more good food and less bad food when these are their choices for breakfast in the morning? And when it takes about 40 to 50 minutes to burn off one 20-ounce soda in terms of running on a treadmill, is exercising more and this isn't just about obesity and malnutrition. It's also about the state of education in America. The EIU recently ranked America number 17 in its global education rankings, exemplifying the continued decline of America in comparison to other countries over the last couple of decades. Is it a coincidence, you think, that the educational decline in America has paralleled the processed foods revolution? Maybe, just maybe, the reason our kids can't learn what we want them to learn is because they can't focus or retain information, because they're falling asleep in class, and they continually experience blood sugar-induced erratic energy swings, all as a result of poor nutrition. Put yourself in their shoes, all right? You wake up late because that's what kids do, and you run out the door lucky to have a dollar in your pocket. You get to school and you know you're not going to have breakfast on time, all right, as evidenced by the fact that the federal school breakfast program experiences a utilization of less than 50% nationally. So what do you do? You hit up the vending machine. So powered by a chocolate bar and a sugary soda, you kick off your day ready to learn. <laughs> Three to four hours later, you get a 25-minute lunch break and you're pumped up. Except for the fact that it takes 25 minutes in line to get the food. So what do you do? You skip the line. Where do you go? The convenience store or the vending machine armed with the nutrition of a strawberry milk and a pack of gummy bears, you're ready to take on the second half of the day. You just hope you won't fall asleep. And then by the time school ends, you're too tired to participate in after-school after activities, or you become too overweight to participate in those activities without being made fun of. So what do you do? You go back to the vending machine to get some foods to comfort you and hold you over, so you can go back and you can watch TV until you go to bed or until your parents get home late from work. I know this sounds crazy and it sounds like a stretch. In many parts of the country, it's not. Kids consume up to 60% of their total calories from school and up to 40% of their caloric consumption comes from junk food. To exacerbate this problem, the nutritional education that we provide our kids and our children and our society is negligible at best. Tell me how this makes any sense. What impacts you more each and every day in terms of performance, productivity, the way you feel, than the foods and drinks you eat? Every single day, the foods and drinks that you eat 
will define you in some way. But what about other school subjects? How do they impact you? Don't get me wrong. I'm an engineer. I love math, but let's talk about geometry. When was the last time an isosceles triangle significantly altered your performance? <laughs> when was the last time a quadrilateral was listed as the cause of type 2 diabetes? <laughs> and kids, okay, are not alone. I find it a little bit weird and illogical that corporations speak a big game about corporate wellness, corporate wellness. Yet their only around-the-clock food service option that they're so scared to get rid of is the traditional junk food vending machines down the hall. Just like a sports team, a food service program is only as good as its weakest link. I don't care how amazing your quarterback is. If you have a huge hole in your offensive line, he's going to get hit on every play. As human beings, we use small derailments to justify much larger derailments. And this is why we must strengthen and focus on every weakest link, no matter how small and insignificant it seems, because it's never as small as you realize. And in creating a better tomorrow, we also cannot ignore the inescapable trends of the future. One of those trends, convenience. As we progress as a society, we want things faster and faster with less and less effort, right? But the problem today is that all of the convenient food service options that are available at wide scale are typically unhealthy and harmful. This is the reality of the world we live in today. This all is the reality of the world that we live in today. And the fact of the matter is that today it's very, very difficult to be healthy. But for a second, I want us to imagine a new world. A world where healthy food is actually more convenient than junk food. Where it's easy to access nutrition, and nutrition is everywhere. Where convenience stores and vending machines and micro markets bring nutrition directly to people, rather than asking people to get educated about it and go and find it on their own where it's incredibly difficult to find and therefore eat those foods that are harmful to you, so you do so sparingly, as was the original intention. Where everywhere you turn, there's fresh foods, energy-sustaining healthy snacks, foods from the earth, healthy drinks, fruits and vegetables. In this world, it's almost impossible to consistently eat harmfully, and as a result, the problems related to obesity, malnutrition, even education began to fade away. Access, therefore, is the answer. It was about 10 years ago that I had the unreasonable idea of putting healthy foods and drinks in vending machines. It was about eight years ago that I had the even more unreasonable idea to skip medical school and become an overeducated vending operator. In all of this time, I really haven't belonged, whether it's in the vending industry or whether it's in the typical group of, eng of biomedical engineering graduates. But also during the entire time, I've always felt right at home. Because I was able to create my own path and do exactly the opposite of what I was told. And by doing so, I found a place where I believe I can have the most beneficial impact on this amazing world that we live in at least for now. So remember that game we played in the beginning? I want to play it one more time. Let's play the don't belong game. I'd like to ask you which of the following in this list does not belong in recommended career paths for those who want to create a better tomorrow? Next. Is it A, academia? Next. B, Wall Street? C, large corporation, or D, vending social entrepreneur, or insert other unsexy industry that needs massive change. Do we have any answers out there? What is it? <laughs> it's a trick question. None of the answers do not belong. Because everybody has their right answer, their own right path. I simply challenge you today to find yours and to understand that it may not be a path you've ever thought of before. Thank you.